Hey everyone, Chris Gamble of Chris Gamble's Analog Life and the Amp Hour Podcast here. And today I'm actually going to talk about how we record the Amp Hour Podcast. Why am I doing this? Well, because some people have been asking me over time, you know, I get a request here and there. And not only am I lazy, I'm also trying to be efficient because I'm guessing there's more than one person that might want to know how we record the podcast right now. And not only that, I'm actually a really big fan of podcasts. I really enjoy listening to them. You know, my commute's gotten a lot longer recently, and so I listen to them every day. I mean, upwards of an hour a day or more, I'm listening to podcasts, and when you go an hour a day, I mean, there's only an hour of the amp hour a week, and there's only an hour of the Engineering Commons a week, my other podcast. And I don't even listen to those because those are ours. I already know what's going on with those. So uh, finding other technical podcasts is is tough. I mean, there's 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 some out there, and they're and they're pretty good. If you go over to theamphour.com, actually, there's a list of them in the sidebar. But once you get through those, then I mean, even those aren't necessarily weekly. Once you get through all those, what do you got left? You got just marketing podcasts. I mean, I do listen to them. Uh, <laughs> But, uh, you know, there's, there's, there's only so many technical podcasts out there. So my hope is by sharing this information, not only will it be helpful to people that really want to do it for whatever reason, you know, if they want to do a podcast about cars or what, whatever else it might be. What I'm really hoping is that people will take this and then create more electronics podcasts or, you know, just engineering podcasts or mechanical podcasts or really all the things that I'm interested in I want to listen to. So hopefully that's you. So today we're going to go over the software we use, and there will be some screenshots and stuff. The hardware we use, I mean, we got the microphone here and a couple other things. And uh, just kind of the methodology behind it. It's not too hard. What really I'm really hoping to do is make it easier on you because uh, it, one of the biggest impediments is often just getting started. And, you know, if, if you're bogged down in all the details of, oh, well, audio editing and paying for software, paying for hardware... We don't want that. We want to be able to get it so that it's as fast as possible and it's easy as possible for you. In terms of podcasting itself, I mean, it's a great way to meet people. It's a great way to flesh out your thoughts on a certain topic. Not necessarily <laughs> live, but, you know, just having a way to express yourself online, it's, it's really nice to have. I really have enjoyed podcasting so far. I've been doing it about two and a half years. So let's dig into some of the hardware and the software and hopefully you'll enjoy it. Okay, so the microphone itself, I use what's called an AT2020. Um, you know, I started with the analog version of this, and I had a mixer and everything, and that worked out okay for a while. But what really ended up happening was, it, you know, Dave, my co-host, suggested switching over to USB just for the ease of it. And that's the thing that I wanted to impart here. Um, you know, it, you can get much better sound quality with a analog mic and, you know, like a actual front end and everything else, preamps. Uh, you can probably get better sound with it, but this thing will get you 90% of the way there. So there's AT2020. Dave uses the C01U, which is the Samson uh, microphone. And really, there's tons of podcasting microphones out there. You really don't have to know too much about them other than you. I think USB is the easiest. You can see here I also have a shock mount, um, you know, nothing fancy there. And then I also put a pop screen in front of it. Uh, when we started this thing, I actually had a what was it a hanger it was a metal hanger with a with a uh, one of my my wife's uh uh what are they called leggings or tights or whatever over top of it just creating the same kind of material but it really can be anything you're just trying to stop puffs of air going in your microphone so honestly that's all you need and it can get even simpler than that so um let's see let's see if i can do this here so another option you can do and this is what we do for live shows sometimes is we uh, and actually that's what I'm recording audio with right now is this uh, I can hold it up here. This is the Zoom H1, and it, you'll sometimes see this. Uh, Ian from Dangerous Prototypes uses this when he's interviewing people live. Um, the firmware was updated on this thing since I bought it, and right now it actually it also works as a USB microphone. So that's really nice. You can see um, it's got XY uh, microphones on it, and in this case I'm actually using a lapel mic, which is just coming up to my shirt, but. Um, you know, there's there's actually an input here. You can do line in, and there's all the different controls. This thing's handy because it's just it's portable. It runs off a single battery. I mean, it's just an SD card, and now that they have the USB connection to the computer, I mean, this just pops up as something on Windows. So, 
Again, just really simple. <laughs> That's what I'm going for here. So this is great for interviews. This is how we interviewed uh, Larry Sears when he was live in the studio or <laughs> my basement, as you want to call it. And it's just really easy. You can also do things like this. You can use you can use your uh, microphone on a on a webcam. I mean, honestly, it's not it's not the best sound quality, but uh, I got the C900, I believe it is. This was suggested by Adafruit. They used they used to use this for their uh, live shows. <laughs> and uh, it's got a pretty decent mic built in. So honestly, this will get you about 80, 90% of the way, and it's it's easy. And if you want to take an even further step back, you can even use built-in microphones on your laptop or a headset if you're using Skype and something like that. Honestly, there's just tons of options, even more important than the microphone itself, because microphones are getting pretty pretty decent even at the MEMS level. So that's what a lot of cell phones use. You know, you can use cell phones to record. This is my uh, Droid X, and this thing has a pretty decent microphone. Uh, the sound quality when you're on a phone call isn't as good because they actually bandwidth limit it, but the microphone in here is, is pretty decent. So if you actually use a, a recording app, you can you can uh, you can get pretty decent sound quality. But the important thing is actually not the microphone itself. Often it's the room that you're in. I'm in a basement right now, so it's uh, it's a little echoey. I mean, I have I have ductwork all around me. I have the hard brick wall right next to me, but it's it's not necessarily the microphone itself. Oftentimes, it's the it's the stuff that surrounds it. So uh, you can see a video that Dave did. He did a uh, how to how to build a sound damper for your walls, a decorative sound damper, and that's real helpful. You know, you can put you can put pillows. Sometimes I'll have pillows up here, up in front of my uh, my console here. I know this is wow, this is. I'm not very used to using this camera, but sometimes I'll put I'll put pillows up here, and uh, you know it's it's just whatever you can do to help deaden the sound and and get vocal quality up. That's what's really important here. So that's kind of the hardware side of it. The rest of it's just you know a computer, laptop, uh, PC. I, I have a I have a standard desktop I built, and it's not that hard past that. So again, uh, USB microphones probably are your best bet. If you want to go even a little higher, you can go to uh, you know, an analog microphone and a preamp. Next up is uh, you know a, a handheld, uh, something like this with also again USB built in. And then next one down would be a webcam mic, or and then finally like a laptop built in mic. So that's kind of the the range of what you can do. Okay, one last thing on the hardware. Uh, we actually also use. Uh, at first, I used to use headphones like this. I thought I needed really good headphones. These are actually drumming microphone or drumming headphones rather. You know, nice big solid. Uh, padding on the sides, you know, really good sound quality and everything. But these days, honestly, what I use is I use stupid iPod headphones. You don't need really great headphones for, for recording. And in fact, it kind of hurts you sometimes because if you want to monitor, if you want to hear back what you're saying in the microphone, often through computers, there's a, there's a slight delay and it's really, really off-putting. So what I do, often I just put one headphone in. It's more than enough. Um, you know, I don't put it too loud so that it won't bleed through back to the recording. Other than that, though, uh, honestly, headphones should be almost no concern to you. The worst that you're going to do is not be able to hear something or, you know, have it so loud and so thumping that it's going to bleed right back through. So that's that's kind of the hardware. That's that's all you really need for an audio podcast. So let's start looking at the software and see what, what you might need for the, the software side of things. Okay, so I have switched over to the AT2020 USB microphone. So before I was on a lapel mic going into the H1 and then going into the computer through USB. Um, so you might be able to hear the differences, maybe not. Um, like I said, it really shouldn't be too big of a difference. Um, but, you know, some people have more of an ear than others. What really matters is the background noise, like everything else I was talking about before. So this is our little secret here. This is called Mumble, and this is what we sometimes talk about on, on the Amp Hour. But I use this on both the Amp Hour and on the Engineering Commons, and this is a great program. It is an open source software program. You can get it on SourceForge, and I'll link it on chrisgamble.com when I post this video there. I'll also have links to you know all the products that I use and everything. Uh, but it's, it's a great it's a great program. Honestly, it's it's used for a purpose that I don't really agree with. It's used for gamers. You know, uh, they put headsets on, and they can talk to each other while they're you know shooting each other, setting up. World of Warcraft raids, whatever, whatever gamers do. Uh, but whoever designed this program also designed in really great features for podcasters. And so this is when I found this, it was it was a godsend. Honestly, it was it was just like it was awesome. So the reason being, um, podcasts are really t easy when you start, 
Uh, if it's just you and another person or you by yourself, it's just recording software, which I'll, I'll get to in a second here. Um, but the really hard thing about doing podcasts is getting more than two people onto it and getting more than two people onto it clearly and reliably. And so let's just look at Mumper real quick. So, um, you know, we actually, you see uh, there's a couple servers you can get here. You can get on public internet servers, whatever. We actually have our own server. I'm not going to share the information with <laughs> what that server is, but um, we actually rent with a company called Mumbleboxes, and it's like two bucks a month. We rent space. We have access to it whenever we want to. And me and Dave just dial into this thing, or me and Jeff for the engineering commons. So I'm going to connect to it. And you can see, uh, you know, we hook up to mumble boxes and everything like that. And, and uh, But the really, there's two really impressive things with, with this program. The first is um, the codec. The codec is much better. I guess there's three things then. Uh, <laughs> there's the codec, which is really good. It's actually better than Skype's as far as I'm concerned. Um, it's really clear. You know, when you're talking to each other, when it encodes the audio, it's just really well done codec. Another thing is the fact that it is dedicated. So this isn't necessarily Mumble itself, but the fact that there's a server that's dedicated just for us, and you know we buy space for it. Uh, Skype isn't like that, actually. Skype, which a lot of people use for podcasting, it bounces you between um, you know different servers. It's it's less reliable. Um, but in this case, you know I connect to the server, Dave connects to the server, Jeff connects to the server. Um, it's it's single point connection, and it's all determined by your internet connection in your house and then the internet connection at where the server's hosted. And so that really cuts down a lot of failure points. Um, we've had some problems in the past, but um, it was a lot easier to troubleshoot than sometimes Skype is just, well, well it's just not great today. So um, that's, that's the second thing. Now, the third thing, and this is the real key thing. Um, this is the best thing ever. Uh, <laughs> so in, in every other program you use with Skype and everything else, um, you actually you can you can have you know five or six people on the call, but you can only record one audio stream. You can only record all five people at once. So if the dog starts barking at person four's house, you're gonna hear that, and it's gonna be really hard to edit out. And this little button right here, this multi-channel thing, this is when I found this. This is this is the thing that that just made me go through the roof. So you know you hit start here. It starts recording. That's the lovely sound that it plays. And if there was more than just me on the call right now, it would actually record a wave file for every single person on the call at my box. It would it would record, you know, if there's four people, there would be four separate audio streams recorded locally on my machine, and they would be full full audio files where I could mix them all together. I could edit people's, uh, you know, if, if there's like a dog barking, if someone coughs, I can edit that out. That honestly is one of the most important things in podcasting, as far as I'm concerned. Um, so this this find when I found this, I was I was very very excited about it. Between the codec and between the uh, between the ability to re record each person's channel individually, that was really what did it. Um, so you see, there's uh, there's also you know the down mix. If you want it simpler, you can just record the whole thing, but that would be like recording a Skype conversation. So this is really this is really the key here. The downside to all this is you have to ask guests to install Mumble, and um, you know we've been really lucky. We've had really accommodating guests um, for some of the higher profile guests. We've had really um, helpful you know assistants working with them in order to help install it before the, just because their time is so is so uh, limited. But we've been really lucky so far, and we hope we can in the future as well. Um, and, and in terms of the audio quality, we're actually getting what's um, streaming back from, from the server. It's just streaming back all that data. All of the individual data streams are streaming right back to my computer. And Dave does the same. So we actually have multiple copies in multiple locations, automatic backups. There's very f few ways that they can fail and, and lose uh, the recording itself. So I'll hit stop there. Um, so th that's, that's the first part of all this of the software and and really this this alone is is pretty great i mean there's uh audio settings audio wizards everything like that you can do up here um you know there's text -to speech but that's more for the gamers you know someone can type stuff in there's a text box too you know you can chat stuff in here too this is chris right i can type that in there um and you can send messages to each each person if you want to honestly mumble is just a, is a great great program i i'm very happy we found it but the other the other thing that we do is we also record on 
audacity. So me and Dave, not only do we have a guest, when we have a guest on, you know, we'll record them remotely, you know, so we'll, we'll actually record their audio for them. So they don't have to do any recording. They just have to hook up a microphone or a headset or whatever they have. And then we'll, we'll actually have mumble pull their audio down, but then Dave and I will also have our audio recording. And so we'll just hit record on audacity. It'll record in audacity. It'll also record in mumble. So we'll have multiple copies of everybody's audio and it's great. So, um, you know, we collect all that audio end of the day. Um, we finally, you know, have all these audio files and then we put it into audacity and audacity is what we use for audio editing. So audacity is another open source software program. Um, it's a little clunky to learn if you're, you know, if you're starting out, especially, you know, I came over from, uh, Adobe audition, which used to be cool edit pro. Um, you know, if you're making that transition, it's a little harder, but in general, um, it's, it's a really great piece of software. I mean, it allows easy panning and zooming. You know, if you're used to windows type commands, if you're, you know, if you use a, a mouse scroll wheel and everything like that, it's uh, it's, it's a very convenient piece of software. And so then you look at, you know, how we're actually doing this. This is actually a multi-track program. This is actually show 126. So this was just me and Dave. Um, but you can see, you know, this is, let's see, here's the intro file that I recorded. And then this is our, our great audio theme that was recorded by uh, Paul Stevenson. And he's been really generous, you know, gifting us these, this theme music. And then we cut right into, you know, Dave's intro. This is Dave's audio file, and this is mine. And and honestly, that's all it takes. You just line it up, and then you go. And then what's really nice is, you know, so like I said before, if you have if you have a guest and you have multiple audio files here, right? So Dave, me, and maybe a third person. Say I talk over Dave, and um, you know, I want to just blank something out here. Well, I just you know select it. And I blank it out. I mean, that's that's the best part about it, especially when you have multiple tracks. If you try to do that when I was talking over someone else, you couldn't blank it out. And so that's really the key for for recording interviews. Um, so really, you know, this is this is Audacity. Audacity is another open source program. You can get it on SourceForge. I'll have links on ChrisGamble.com. But another great program. It's free. It's easy. And uh, you know, and there's there's other things you can do in here too. There's there's a bunch of uh, plugins you can use. Uh, effects. Really, you don't even need those though. The only other, the only plugin you need, and the only thing that we really use is called the Levelator. And if you look at this, um, so this is, you know, the, a lot of the files that I have here. So show 126 with Dave. What I do is basically I get I get files from Dave, um, myself, and then a guest, and then I just drop them onto this Levelator. Um, and it's just really nice program. It's it's free to use. Um, you know, they take donations. The conversation network who, who make the software I highly suggest donating we did um, and what it does is is it does all of the audio post processing that you really will need to do for a lot of podcasts um, if you don't have a lot of background noise then you're gonna be in really good shape for going to the level later because if you keep your background noise down then it only amplifies the important parts of your audio uh, you know like the peaks here like I show here um, if you if you if you keep your background noise clean, then it'll only show, um, it'll only amplify the stuff that's important, and it'll also compress it. Compressing also helps to get more dynamic range out of uh, the sound. It, it just gives it a better quality. Um, they also do some noise reduction and other techniques, but it's all in the background, and that's what's really nice about it. So um, the levelator is another great thing. So the flow goes, you know, we record, I pull the mumble files, I pull our local files, Dave sends me his, his local file, we throw them into levelator, we throw them into um, uh, Audacity, and and we go, and that's and that's all it takes, honestly. And then we just piece it all together, and uh, I feel kind of guilty because now it sounds like I don't do any work. Uh, <laughs> but we piece it all together, and um, you just you edit <laughs> edit where you need to, you clean up where you need to, uh, you know, and that and that's just a, a thing you really learn with time. But once you once you get all that stuff done, you Let's see, you export to a, a wave, and then you export to an MP3, add some tags, load it up to a site that's called um, Libsyn. We call it, we use something called Libsyn. Uh, let's see if I can pull that up maybe. It's here. Um, let's see. Let's see if I can get Libsyn up here. So this is Libsyn, um, and 
Libsyn just allows you to upload to them. You, they have a limited upload amount, but then it's unlimited downloading for however many users. It gives you great stats, and it's it's really a great platform. It's it's uh, for what we for the level we use. It's about twenty bucks a month, but honestly, it's very it's very worth it. Um, if you especially you have a lot of downloads and such, and so um, because bandwidth really can add up. I mean, I think with one show over the course of a month or so, it it starts getting up into the hundreds of gigabytes of down of bandwidth. So um, it can, it can really, it can really start to add up. <laughs> so, uh, let's see anything else here. Um, and then the rest is, you know, just publishing of a podcast. There's iTunes feeds and there's websites, you know, we use WordPress, everything else. Um, uh, but all that stuff really, that's all the other stuff. I mean, you can do it a lot simpler than that if you want to. Uh, this is really just about the software and the hardware and, uh, and getting your, getting your ideas out there. So that's kind of how we do podcasts um, for the Amp Hour and the Engineering Commons and any others I do in the future that aren't video-based. Uh, all the audio podcasts, that's, that's kind of how I do it. Uh, maybe if I start doing more video in the future, I'll do a video about that. But again, there's I mean, there's a lot of information out there about how we do it, but I'm just trying to make it as simple as possible for you. And hopefully it's a little bit it's helpful enough to get you started, and hopefully you'll be able to make some technical podcasts. So I'm looking forward to it. Let me know when you do make your first one, and I'll promote it, and I'll listen to it, and I look forward to it. Thanks for watching.